Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. We continue to inch ever nearer to completion of my advanced Hero Quest restoration project. I have been busy making replacement boards and handouts for the Terror in the Dark expansion because frankly, I can't afford the real thing, but now it's time to turn our attention to the Skaven from the core set. The original advanced Hero Quest core set contained 20 of these creepy critters, and while they all have the same body shape, there were five different variant weapons available, all different types of pointy long knives. There was a serrated long knife, one with a hilt, one that was more like the end of a harpoon, one that had a sort of integrated meat hook, and a plain old-fashioned butcher's knife style. So with 20 miniatures in 5 designs, you should have 4 of each of these, but it doesn't matter, there is no in-game difference between these miniatures, it's all just for appearance. Additionally, these Skaven have shields, and to the best of my knowledge there are 5 different designs. As with the weapons, it doesn't matter what combination of shields you have, it's all just for show. It is worth noting that these Skaven are much easier to paint if you don't attach the shields first. If you are lucky, yours won't be glued on, and you will have a happier life for it. If yours are glued on, you may be able to separate the shields. If they were super glued, you can sometimes put the miniature in the freezer, which will make the glue brittle, and then you can pull the shield off. Although, in most cases, you are going to snap the peg in the hole. However, if the shields are held on with plastic glue, or if you are just a bit queasy about the idea of snapping your prized vintage miniatures, you are just going to have to leave the shields on and work around them. Just remember, if you can't see it, you don't need to paint it. Anyway, these are wonderful miniatures, I love them. They have such a strong distinctive silhouette, and they lovely flow through the miniature. Best of all, they look threatening, like you wouldn't want to mess with too many of them and they are some of the only miniatures that are posed so you can have little sword fights with them. Ha! Take that! But they are a little old, and the quality of the sculpting and moulding isn't quite up to modern standards, to say the least, although that, of course, adds to the charm of this game. If we look at the Skaven's weapon arm, we can see it has some kind of armband, but if you look closely at the top of the band, there is a very weird, sharp, angled bulge. It took me ages to figure out the angled bulge is supposed to be the end of the handle of a secondary weapon sticking out from the Skaven sheath. If you look at the reverse side, you can see a little bit of the grip detailing, but that detailing isn't very clean, and the way the handle sort of merges into the armband and the Skaven's clothing means that when you're painting your Skaven, you have to make a best guess on where things begin and end, and then commit to your decision and define it with your paint. It's a bit like painting the beard on the dwarf from the original Hero Quest. But anyway, we want to get these based up. Advanced Hero Quest ships with different coloured bases. These were used to help players distinguish special characters without having to paint them. So, if you're painting like I am, it doesn't matter which bases you use. You will notice the slots on the bases aren't central. Make sure your Skaven feet are pointing towards the wider part of the base, and then just click them in and apply some plastic glue to the underside of the base to fuse the tab in position. Because I am painting flagstones on the bases rather than using basing materials like grit or texture paint, I want the bases to be quite smooth on the surface, so I am going to file the surface of the tab to make sure it isn't sitting too high. If you find the tab is too low or there is an obvious ridge, you can fill it with some green stuff or even just some super glue, and then when that's dry, file it down again. We also need to clean the miniatures. There are quite a lot of mould lines on these miniatures, particularly along the snout, and those will need to be shaved off with a knife or mould line remover. We are now ready to undercoat. I like to use rattle cans for that, and I'm actually going to use Chaos Black to set a darker tone for this colour palette. When that's dry, we can start painting. As I like these Skaven a lot, I want them to look half decent, but there's 20 of them to get through, so I still want to do something pretty quick so I don't go mad. Also, I'm going to paint them in sets of five. Each set of five is going to have a different coloured jerkin, and each miniature within a set will, if possible, have a different shield design and a different weapon. In this way, despite not really mixing up the way I'm painting them, no two of these Skaven should look exactly alike, because even those that have the same coloured clothes will have different weapon loadouts. But first, we want to deal with the fur. I'm going to use Army Painter Fur Brown as the base coat, I'll be honest here, I was supposed to use leather brown, which is much lighter and has less of a red tinge to it, but I picked up the wrong bottle, and here we are. I will use leather brown for another set of five later on. That mistake aside, I am thinning it with a little water so it doesn't clag up the details, and I am applying two coats. 
When that's dry, we're going to switch to Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply a heavy wash of this over all of the brown. We want to make sure we get into all the deepest recesses like the cavities of the ears and we can just slosh it on a bit carelessly really. With that done, we are going back to fur brown and this time we're going to do an overbrush. So we load up the bristles of our brush and wipe most of the paint back off, leaving more than if we were doing a dry brush and then we whip the brush over the surface of the fur to pick out the raised details. If you wanted to, you could then switch to a lighter brown or add a little white to your base brown and do another highlight, but the clocks are ticking, so let's move on. There is more to do on the furred areas. We have to add the fleshy bits around the nose and ears, but before we get to that, I want to block in the other colors. For this set of five Skaven, I am using Eschen Gray for the tunics. Go for whatever color you want though. You could even go for bright colors or go really light and then stain the hems with Agrax Earthshade and Seraphim Sepia to simulate the accumulation of grime. But whatever the color, it's the usual practice. I'm thinning the paint down and applying two coats for a nice smooth coverage. And for the first time, we need to start being a bit careful because obviously we don't want to overpaint our brown fur. Then we are switching to Null Oil and we are going to wash the tunics to bring out all the detailing in the folds and tears. And we will be going back to do highlights shortly, but first we are going to pick out the rest of the main colors on the miniature. We need a brown. I'm going for Steel Legion Drab and we are applying this to the belt and the handle of both weapons. There is also a little pouch around the back of the miniature. You could use different colors for all these elements, but as I've mentioned, I'm keeping this as simple as possible. I will use a different color for the sheath of the secondary weapon though. I'm going for something really dark, dryad bark. You can use whatever you want, even go for a bright red or green or something if you want a pop of color in there. Next, we're going to do the tail. For this, I'm using Bugman's Glow, which is a nice pinky fleshy color. Two thin coats of that. Then we're going to grab some Reichland Flesh Shade and we're going to put that on the tail for recess shading and to make it even fleshier. Next, we are switching to one of my favorites, Balthazar Gold. This is going on the braces, the shin guards, the belt buckle, the belt studs and the little ring on the end of the tail. Then we switch to Lead Belcher and we paint the blade of the hand weapon. As always, keep the paint thin. Go for two coats if you need to for an even smooth coverage. Next up, we have Pallid Witch Flesh, which is a sort of warm off-white color. We're going to use this to pick out some teeth where we can and also to paint the toenails. If you want to, you could use a bone color here or any off-white you feel like. And then we're going back to Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply this to the belt, the pouch, the weapons, that's the handles and blades, the bracers and the shin guards. We want to give the whole miniature a grubby, dirty look. Next, we want to switch to Cadian Flesh Tone and we want to make this into a really heavy glaze using Lamian Medium. With this, we are going to paint the fleshy parts of our Skaven, such as the snout, the top of the ears, and I will also put some on the hands and feet. We're going to build the color up over multiple coats, feathering it slightly to try to get a bit of a blend between the flesh and the fur. Don't worry too much about blending though, because you can always grab your Agrax Earthshade and go back to line in the recesses and help to smooth the transitional areas. Just keep futzing around with it until you're happy, really. But with that done, all of our base colors and initial shading are finished. We now need to go back to do highlighting and final details. The easiest thing to do, and what I'm going to do here, is go back with each of the base colors, thin them slightly, and then build up some highlights on the raised parts of the miniature. That means I'm using Eschen Grey on the tunic, Balthazar Gold on the copper, Lead Belcher on the weapon blade, Steel Legion Drab for the browns, and Bugman's Glow for the tail. Then we just thin some Abaddon Black, and we use that to line in the eyes. Once that dries, we thin some Pallid Witch Flesh and put a dot in the eyes for reflections, and that is our Skaven done, except for the shield. As you can see, I have glued some shields onto cocktail sticks here, and I have a piece of foam I can stab the cocktail sticks into so they will stand up while the paint is drying. There are five shield designs here, but they are all being painted in pretty much the same way. First, I put down a base color. For this one, I am using Xandri Dust. I'm going to apply two thin coats. Then I'm going to use Lead Belcher to paint the raised insignia. Again, I will thin the paint and apply two coats. Next is Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to slosh that on to really make the details pop, but also to make the shields look dirty and old. And then I'm going to use the base colors on the insignias just to brighten them back up to finish them off.
And with that, we're done. I've attached the shields to the Skaven, and with the exception of painting the flagstone bases, which I have already covered in a separate video, so I'm not going to do it again here, this little group is ready for action. The remaining 15 Skaven will all get variations of this basic formula with different fur tones and tunics, but the theory is always the same. Get it done quickly and neatly and get these things into the dungeon as soon as possible. But that is it from me for now, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.